worship, a time for connecting with God and with other people. I'm glad that each one of us is here, and I trust that we're here for a reason, that God has something to speak into our life this morning. In the Sermon on the Mount, which is our core passage this fall, Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world. We're meant to shine. As we enter into worship today, I invite you to think of something that might stop you from shining. Maybe a fear, a challenging situation, something else. And hold it in your mind and heart as we pray and as we reflect on Jesus' words today. May you give to God whatever holds you back. May you soak up the warmth of God's light. And may you sense God's blessing today as we pray and sing and reflect together. Good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday of the Labor Day, 2020. Now let us be in an attitude of prayer. God who is light, and love and laughter, we come seeking your warmth. We come seeking your presence. Speak to our hearts through our worship today. Guide our minds to know you and ourselves better. Show us the path you would have us walk. And lighten with faith, hope, and love. We come giving you all that we are and have and do in the name of Jesus, the light of the world. Amen.
Good morning. I was thinking of the rhyme that goes, here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors and here are all the people. We haven't been able to be together in our church in a long time because of COVID-19. Does that mean that we're not a church? Of course not. The people make the church. We are the church, no matter if we're virtual or in person. But I know we're all missing each other and we'd like to see each other. And since we now know that being outdoors is better, we are planning our Sunday school kickoff for next week, Sunday, September 20th. We will have an outdoor event where masks will be required and the fun stations will help us and allow us to be socially distant. Our stations will include Back to School Blessing with Pastor Allison, two craft stations that will involve paint and permanent markers, so don't come in your Sunday best, be ready to paint. We will harvest vegetables from our garden. We will have self-guided prayer walks in the Justice Garden, a story station. We will also have a Wingari's Trees of Peace station where we will be able to continue donating money to, so that we can buy a tree for the Green Belt Movement that Wangari started, and also do a tree for our own garden. I've already added some money, so don't forget your change on, on September 20th. We also will have a voting where you'll choose between two trees, so you can help us decide which tree we will plant in our garden. Our Sunday school kickoff is next Sunday, September 20th from 3 to 4.30. All are invited. Sunday school youth and their families, adult Sunday school members, and anyone else that would like to join us. We are asking for all to RSVP to me so that we will be prepared with materials. You can email me. My correct email is in the directory. I no longer have a home phone, so you can also text or call me on my cell. If you don't have my contact information, you can call Jane in the office she has permission to give out my information. I'd like to close with a new poem. Here is our church. Right now, we can't all be in there, but we are still united with lots of love to share. Hope to see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. In order for you to better understand our scripture reading for this morning, Here's a little background information. Christ had called together his disciples and told them that they should be fishers of men. Here he tells them further what he designed them to be, the salt of the earth, and lights of the world, that they might be indeed what it was expected they should be. As the lights of the world, they are intended to illuminate and give light to others. This would encourage and support them under their sufferings, that though they should be treated with contempt, yet they should really be blessings to the world, and the more so for their suffering. Jesus says, any reform that starts on the outside and works in is beginning at the wrong end. The only way of getting a good life is first getting a good heart. From the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, it reads, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lamp stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light 
time before all, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Here ends the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mom grew up in Indiana, and when I was seven, we, we took a road trip to go visit her hometown of Muncie and have some time to meet some of her friends, her childhood friends. One of those friends had three kids, a girl who was just a little bit older than me, and two boys who were my sister's ages. Their grandparents lived in this big farmhouse that had a, a lovely backyard. It was a magical place full of flowers and woods, places for games and adventure. We were glad to be there. The six of us played tag, we played hide and seek in that yard while the grown ups sat inside and talked. As dusk came, little fireflies started to flicker in the field. More fireflies than I'd ever seen at once before. Each time one of their light went out, the lights of others would light up. You'd like lose sight of one for a moment, and by the time it would blink again, it was hard to tell if you were seeing the same one or if it was a new one. It was beautiful, so many of them. One of our new friends, who was the big sister of this family, she had an idea. So she disappeared into the house for a minute, she found a jar in the kitchen, and came back, and started collecting the fireflies to make a lantern. She was the ringleader, getting my sisters and I to help out. But her brother was watching too. He must have been feeling mischievous, as younger siblings tend to do. Clearly, I'm an oldest. And so he took her jar when she wasn't looking, and she, he released all those fireflies she collected to free them. Sure, he was feeling good about freeing them, maybe also about upsetting his sister's plans. And not too long, though, she refilled that jar. She caught a bunch more of the fireflies to replace the released fireflies. And this time, she decided to put a towel over her little lantern so that he couldn't find it in the dark and let those bugs go again. Maybe it helped her win a battle of wills and wits with her brother, but it did kind of defeat the purpose of making a lantern in a dark field on a summer evening. Sometimes, in the face of challenges, whether they're playful ones or less playful ones, we cover up our light. Maybe that's why Jesus brings up the bushel basket here in this passage from the Sermon on the Mount. He's giving this this. this sermon about how he wants his followers to live, and he tells them no one puts a bushel basket over a lamp, except sometimes we do. There are things that get in the way of us shining our light. For some of us, our bushel basket is fear. For others, distraction. For some, maybe it's shame. For others, frustration with the way things are. Sometimes we cover up the light. And so Jesus mentioning the bushel basket here feels like an invitation to think about what helps us shine, what helps us take off the bushel basket and let our light out. Jesus mentions the bushel basket for a reason. He says, you are the light of the world. Light is meant to shine. Sometimes things get in the way, but what is it that helps us shine in spite of those things? This image of light comes up a bunch of other times in the Bible. But interestingly, often the focus is a little different in a way that is helpful to me as I think about what we need to shine our light. In John 8, chapter, in chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. This time it's not that, that you are the light of the 
world, but he's saying, I am, meaning Jesus is, the light of the world. In the second letter he wrote to the people who lived in Cor Corinth, Paul says, the same God who said, let there be light, lets the light of Jesus shine in our hearts. Our light isn't our own. It comes from God. These other passages lift that up. And so something that helps us shine, helps us not cover up our light, is doing what we can to connect with the source of the light, which is God. In fact, our shining our light is dependent on God's light. We don't shine without God. We don't shine out of our own willpower or strength or wits. God is the source of the light. This summer, the girls had a, had a babysitter who, who got them a rock painting kit that had glow-in-the-dark paint as part of it. And so they painted the rocks and they, in, in pretty colors, and they let them dry. And then they added this glow-in-the-dark embellishment over top of it. The first day, they were so excited to see them glow that they took them right from the basement spot where they were drying up to their room, and they, they turned the light off right away. You could kind of see the rocks, but the girls were disappointed. Why weren't they glowing like they were on the box? So we told them to put them in the sun all day the next day, right on their windowsill. And the next night they took them in and they closed the curtains, they turned off the light. And what happened? Suddenly I heard bursts of giggles and, look, Mama, they're so bright. As an aside, later one night that week, I, I turned off the light in my own room to go to bed, and I noticed the glowing on my nightstand. My three-year-old had gifted me one of her glow-in-the-dark rocks. The next day, she came back in, and she, she took it back, and she said, I changed my mind. I think it glows better in my room. And so she put it back in her window so it could soak up the sun, so it could glow. The call to let our light shine is a call to draw near to the source of the light, to spend time resting in that source, the one who is the light of the world, so that we too can be light for the world. Not long after I got here, Gloria, who oversees the altar, she put up a banner in the sanctuary that said, Bask in the light of the sun, sun spelled S-O-N. Like the girls glow in dark rocks, basking in God's light lets us shine. Time with God fills us with the courage that we need to shine in spite of the worries that might make us hesitate or the shame that might tell us we aren't good enough. Time with God gives us the courage to let God's light shine out over our own fear or our shame. And time with God fills us with compassion to shine. In spite of the frustration we sometimes might feel with other people for not being what they could or should be, our frustration with the world for not being what it could or should be, time with God gives us space to, to soak up compassion to shine in spite of what could distract us from other people. Time with God opens us to compassion that, that moves us beyond ourselves. So friends, let's draw near to the source. Let's spend time with the source. How do we do that? While we were in Ocean Grove last week, there was a bookstore that had a 50% off sale, always enticing. So I stopped in, and I came across a book that was written by a 15-year-old girl who had been through an awful car accident. And she writes about simple prayers that grounded her. Often it's simple practices that ground and focus us in the midst of the challenges or busyness or unsettledness of our lives. Her reminders for trust, for energy, for 
this girl wrote about in the book, they were food for my soul. And so touched by her spirit, I'd invite you to have some simple prayer this week, to take 10 extra minutes each day this week on your own. To pray in whatever way you're led to pray. Say to God, whatever it might be that's on your mind that you have to say, the way that you might to a friend. Write down your prayer, if you're, if you're the writing kind. You can sit quietly. Let quietness be your prayer as you listen for what God might be wanting to say to you in the midst of it. You could reread the Beatitudes or this passage today about salt and light and be open to how God might show you how it applies to your life right now. And pay attention for when and where and with whom you feel the most refreshed or centered or hopeful throughout all these prayer practices. And shift time to those practices, to those places that ground you, to those people that encourage you. Redirecting our energies can be a way form of prayer, too. Prayer draws us to God, and also it's a space for sensing the ways that God is always drawing near to us. So let's draw near to the source. Let's seek the light and soak it up and let it glow. Jesus is the light of the world, and he tells us that we are the light of the world, too. Thanks be to God. moved, I would invite you to give to support the ministry of FUMC by clicking on the link to give online in the video description or the comments. I also invite you to share with us any prayer requests you have this morning by clicking on the link to the form. Know that these requests are prayed over and that we hold them close to our hearts, lifting them to God with you and for you. None of us is alone. Our prayers hold us together as one. And now let's, let's join together in a time of prayer. This prayer that we, that we pray today is adapted from the Lutheran Church of Australia. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. We pray now for the world in which we're called to let our light shine, for the people who will see our good deeds 
and for the church in which the light of the gospel is proclaimed. Strengthen us as people who share your good news. Strengthen our faith through word and sacrament. Bless those of us who are praying together this morning that we might be salt and light in the world. And bring to faith, to trust in you, those who are in need of good news. Have mercy on all nations. Bless our own land. Bring honesty and justice, peace and safety to all places. Bless and protect people in work and leisure. We ask you to comfort those who are suffering, downcast or oppressed. Lift up the fallen, satisfy the needs of the hungry, refugees, the homeless. Help all who are in any trouble and show us what we can do to bring light and to be salt. We pray for our own church community and for all the people in it. Give us faith, strength in faith, and strength in community. Help us love one another and love the people around us. Creator, almighty creator, your son is the light shining in the darkness of our world. Teach us to love one another as you love us so that we might bring joy to the world. Hear our prayers for the sake of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Here I am, Lord. 
Amen. Amen. 